Welcome to the much anticipated sequel to my previous YouTube hit video, How to Sharpen a Charcoal Pencil. There's the star of the previous video, the charcoal pencil. The advantage of sharpening it that way is you can hold it on its point to get a very thin line, or you can hold it flat to get a fatter, softer line. And this leads to any number of line weight combinations. Little Jason Bourne camera action there. So I have people ask me a lot, how do I hold the pencil? And typically when I start the drawing, I will hold it very loose. Just make a lot of straight lines, draw with my arm in any particular direction. I also might move my pad around. As the drawing progresses, I might start holding it closer as I need a little bit more control, a little bit of a harder line. I might even tilt it up into more of a traditional writing type of hold if I need a that type of line. Don't be afraid to move your paper around. You know, you can hold it, really you can hold it however you want, as long as you're able to get the kind of stroke that you want. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about line direction. And your eye sees everything as going in a particular direction in space. A simple example of this is a tabletop. Your eye sees it as being a plane in space, but your eye actually sees everything as being a particular plane in space, whether it's furniture or anything else, your eye sees the dimensionality of them. So when you're drawing, your responsibility as the artist is to convey that dimensionality to the viewer so it can be clearly expressed to them. So in any particular plane that you see, your eye will naturally see it as going in either one of two directions or two of four directions. It sees it either going vertically or horizontally. So that means when you're shading a particular plane in, you want to shade it vertically, like so. Or you would shade it horizontally. And you want to make a specific choice about the direction that you're doing it so that way it's clear to the viewer. You don't want to just shade haphazardly, oh yeah, shade over here, this other thing, my arm's getting tired, shade it over here like this. Because what you're going to end up with is something that's not really going to show dimensionality to the viewer. And it can be easy, especially if you're first drawing, you're first starting to draw, to shade it in very quickly and not make a deliberate effort to shade it in a particular way. So here I'll just show you some kind of arbitrary shape, how to shade it in. <clears throat> so imagine this is some kind of like a wall or some kind of plane going back into space. So you have two options. You can shade it either going the lengthwise with the plane or the heightwise. So here you can see I've, I've shaded in kind of the marks going length with, lengthwise. In this next one, I'll shade it in with the marks going more vertically with the plane. And you can see how both of those, they reinforce the direction that the whatever this plane is going back in space, it reinforces that. And I'll do one more quick example of how not to do it in general. And this is, this is not a rule, there's not a particular rule, but if you want to emphasize the dimension in the drawing, you would want to shade with whatever is the particular plane. So there you go, don't do that. Don't, don't get tired and lazy. I'm guilty, I can say that because I'm guilty of having done it before, but it just never worked out good. And this, of course, this is a demonstration, so I've just shaded those in in a very loose way so you can see the direction of it when you're shading normally if you're shading in a way so that your line work is going to show through eventually, you would obviously shade the whole thing in. <clears throat> so try to think about what the direction of the plane is, and it doesn't matter whatever it is that you're doing, what the plane is. Just try to break it down into a particular plane and then show that direction with your line work. So now I'll talk about when you're shading it in. A lot of times, especially when people first start, they'll just keep their pencil onto the paper and you can see when you overlap the shading, it creates that dark spot in the middle if you just keep your, keep your pencil pressed flat on the paper. So when I want to fill in a particular area, I'll use a circular motion with the pencil, which creates a stroke that has a softer edge on all the sides, and then I can blend it together. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm rotating the pencil.
pencil in a circular motion away from the paper. So you can see this a little bit, a little bit more of the born camera here. I'm rotating, this is exaggerated, in a circular motion away from the paper. So that way the stroke that I use doesn't really have a definitive beginning or end. <clears throat> and it might take some practice to get used to doing it very deliberately to start. But as you do it very slowly over time, you'll start to get faster at it, as you saw when I was doing it above. And then you can blend the strokes together very easily. And you can see information on this and many other fundamentals in my book, Fundamentals of Drawing from Life. Thank you for watching.